Hi. So in this um, section, we're going to go ahead and talk about the median. And the median is so great. I love the median. It's one of my favorites because it's half. It doesn't matter what your data is. And it doesn't even matter if you have outliers. All that matters is the middle. And so if you have this many on this side and this many on this side, this is the middle. And it doesn't even matter what the data is. It's just like, that's the middle. <laughs> So um, again, it's the middle value, but again, I put here how we interpret the median. Is The median is a boundary value, and it says that half of the values lie above it and half the values lie above below it. So when we talk about the weight of models, we would say whatever that median value is that all models weigh above it, this value or this weight, and then the other half ways below it. How do we find it? Well, we can use locators and essentially locators will just be the half mark. So we just want to see out of all the pieces of data we have, what's the halfway? So if I have 16 data, eight is going to be the middle, right? So we just want to get a feel for what the middle would be. So the first thing that's going to be really important is to actually reorder your data largest, um, smallest to largest in ascending order. The second part is to determine the middle value. And so you're going to have to determine whether the number of data is odd or the number of data is even. If it is odd, go ahead and take the half and um, add one and divide by two and then that can that data value will be your median. If it's your data number of data is even then you're going to divide by two and then take that one and the one next to it and then take the average. So here are the 16 weights of models and I already arranged them from uh, ascending order from the lowest weight to the highest weight. So we can see already that step one is already done. So that's good. We don't have to rewrite. We would have if it didn't give it to us in order. Step two says determine the middle value. We do know that we have 16 data, which is even. So if we have 16 data, which is even, then I need to take the mean of the two middle values, which will be these two. So I need to find n over 2 and then n over 2 plus 1. So n over 2 is 16 divided by 2, which is 8. And n over 2 plus 1 is going to be the 8 plus 1, which is 9. Now, notice that these are positions. They are not the weight. Obviously, 8 and 9 pounds. We know it's not the weight. So these are going to be the position. Okay, it's very important. Meaning that we have to take the average of the 8th data value and the ninth data value. Why? Because we had an even number of data. So let's go ahead and count. Here's the first data value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So here is the eighth data value and the ninth data value. And so we will take these two pieces and find the average. So in step I, well I'll do a sub one, <laughs> I is we would say the median is going to be equal to the eighth uh, data value dv plus the ninth data value dv and divide by 2. And that means it's going to be 110 plus 110 divided by 2, which is 110. And we can go ahead and say pounds. So 
So in order to find the median, I just want to reiterate, you have to put your data in ascending order, determine whether the number of data or observations is odd or even. And in our case, since it was even, we were going to take the middle value and the one next to it and then find the average of those two. And this is because if I just use my fingers here, I would have, if I just went 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, I could see that this was going to be the middle, just if I took my fingers and went in, you know, towards the middle. And if I keep going the same amount each side, I would see I would reach the 8th and ninth data value. And so when you have an even number, you have two middle values. And because when you have the even number of data and you have two middle middle values, that's why we take the average because that will be the, the best reflection. So to interpret this, we can go ahead and say that half of the models weigh less than 110 pounds and the other half weighs more than 110 pounds. So when interpreting, just make sure you use the word half and then you use the units from the problem itself and the context. So we always want to be in context of the problem. That way, anyone who reads this understands what scenario we're talking about. All right, well, what if it's not given so nicely? That would be the next one, right? Okay, so here's some raw data. Here's five peanut butter jars and their prices. Find the median peanut butter jar price. So in this case, the first part would be I would have to put in ascending order. So let me go ahead and do that. The low, the cheapest jar was 329. So I'm going to have 329 and then 359. 375, 379, and then 399. And once again, if I kept going in, I could use my finger here, right? I could say, okay, one here, one here, two, two. So if I went one, two, one, two, I could see that 375 is going to be the median. But let's go ahead and use that process that we just did to verify. Okay, so let's determine the number of pieces of data we have. We have five pieces of data, which is odd. So if I have five pieces of data, which is odd, then the median is just that middle at n plus 1 divided by 2 data value. So we'll have n plus 1 divided by 2. So we have to add 1 to 5 first and then divide by 2. So 5 plus 1 is 6 and then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So this is going to be the third data value. Okay, well, let's go ahead and count, right? So here is one, two, one, two, three. This is the third data value. So we take this when it's, see, that's what's so nice. When there's an odd number of data value, there is only one middle value. Whereas in the previous example, when there were even number of data, there's always two middle values. And that's why we have to take the average of the two when there's even number of data. In this case, when there's odd number of data, there's only one middle value. And that's why we can just go find that direct middle value and that is the median. So here, the median is going to be 
375. And again, if we were to interpret this, we would say the same thing, right? We would say half of the peanut butter jar price costs less than three seventy five and the other half costs more than three seventy five. Okay. And again, I use the word half, more than, less than, and the medium, but notice everything's in context of the problem and um, using the word half and even the units in dollars. All right, so then, so now we did odd and even, so we kind of get a gist of that. And then the last one would be how to find um, the median of a frequency table. So you're most likely going to always be given a frequency table. So how can you find the median? Well, recall that if I go back to this example up here, the frequency table is just this data, the model's weights. And I have four 85s, two 98s. And in the table, there's four 85s, two 98s. So it's just written condensely in a table. So how do we find the median? Well, we do the same thing, essentially. We say, OK, well, you know, um, we determine the number of data. the number of data. So in this case, it's 16. Okay. The second part would be to go ahead and find the locator. And when we say locator, we just mean we need to find that position, right? And so here, remember that because an, this was even, we had to find the two middle values. So we had to do n over 2 which was 8, and then n over 2 plus 1, which was 9. And again, these were the locators. So these were the 8th and 9th data value. So we know that it's going to be the 8th and 9th data value. What we need to add here is a cumulative frequency table. So if I put a cumulative here, That just means I'm going to add as I go. So in this case, the first row would be 4. But then I would go ahead and add 4 and 2 and put it here, which would be 6. So then I could add here 6 plus 1 and then put in the third row 7. 7 plus 4, which is 11. 11 plus 3, which is 14, and 14 plus 2 is 16. So I want you to just notice that here, what we call the cumulative frequency part, it just means we're just adding up the frequencies as we go. That's all. That if I just took frequencies and added as I go, like I started with four, added as I go, six, six plus one, I'm adding as I go. What I'm doing is notice the last entry is 16. It's the total number of data. And so uh, if I add as I go, then I could see how many data in that row or before. So for example, if I went to my raw data, I would see that I would have six data values that are 98 pounds and less. Let's go look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have six data that are 98 pounds or less. Six data that are 98 pounds or less. If I went to 110, I would know that there are 11 data that are 110 pounds or less. Let's go look. We have the raw data over here. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 data that are 110 pounds or less. So the cumulative um, co frequency column tells us how many data values are that particular category and less. So if I'm looking for the 8th and 9th data value, I'm going to look for where the 8th and 9th data value is contained. I only know up to, up to 4 is here, up to 6 is this one or below, 7 is this one or below. So only 7 data values, but I'm looking for the 8th and 9th, so I'm looking for the one right next to 7. Well, from 7 to 11, so let's go over here. Oops. Here's the seventh data value, 8, 9, 10, 11. So here's the seventh to 11th data value. 8 and 9 are in there, right? So 8 and 9 are in this next one up to 11 that are going to be 11, 110 or less. So we could see here that the 8th to 11th data values are in this piece here. And we can easily see that both of those values are contained in that row, 110 pounds, right? Just the 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. So this means that from a frequency table, we would have to do the cumulative column and determine where the locators are in which row, and then say, okay, now I can see that the median is 110 pounds. So with the frequency table, it's a little bit more difficult because you'll need that cumulative column but once you do that and you have these, you can easily see where, okay, so it stops at 7, so that means 8 and 9 have to be in the next one. Boom, that's 110, so it's 110. So, and that's how it'll, it, it will be calculated. So it's not too bad, and the cumulative uh, column is actually kind of nice, so you can see how many data values are below that at, or below. But either way, you're just going to go look for your locators and see which row it lies and then pick that one.